and welcome to Goodison Park. Welcome to Everton Live ahead of the Merseyside Derby. I am joined by Ian Snowden this evening as we preview what is a massive, massive game. Now, Snods, how are you feeling ahead of this one? Nervous, apprehensive, but I always am for a Merseyside Derby, I've got to admit. The, uh, I didn't like playing in them. I did in a certain way because you knew, you knew you were at a big club. You knew you were involved in a massive game, but the nerves when you were playing, and even the nerves now, and I've been retired so many years, but uh, they're still there. And uh, no, I'm not looking forward to it in a way. Not because of, of our recent results and Liverpool's, I just don't look forward to them. Uh, I do commentary with Darren, and uh, half of the time I don't even talk. I let Darren <laughs> just carry on commentating. But yeah, it's, uh, it's for the fans, this. And we know how much it means to uh, the Evertonians uh, to, to beat the local rivals. So I know the odds are definitely stacked against us on current form, but a derby is a derby. And we keep repeating that year in and year out. Hopefully we got a great result last season. Hopefully we can uh, reiterate that this evening. Let's hope so, Snods. Let's really, really hope so. But let's have a look first at what's to come for you tonight here on Everton Live. So we will, of course, have the team news for you as it drops for both Everton and Liverpool, of course. We'll have a look at the latest with Bramley Moore Dock, women's highlights from last week and an impressive win at Leicester. We will have Poppy Pattinson from Everton winning, Women joining me to preview the game and also a little look ahead of the games for Everton Women too. We'll have a look back at the highlights from the Goodison Sleep Out. Fantastic and well done, of course, to everybody who took part in that. I spoke a little earlier to James Beatty as well, previewing tonight's game and a little look back at his time at Everton. We'll have a pre-match player interview. We will hear from Rafa Benitez. And as Snod said, as ever, we will be live with commentary. Snod and Darren Griffiths on Everton FC. Com. But to kickstart us now, let's have a look back at some Derby highlights from across the years. having a look at some of the highlights there from the derbies over the years and no matter how we're feeling ahead of this one I know as you said you know we're the, the odds are stacked against us today but it gives you that hope doesn't it you see Andy King you see Graham Sharp you see Duncan Ferguson you're thinking come on let's have some I wish we had some of them players mentioned on that pitch this evening but uh, yeah it's all it's all about the the boys the 11 he selects from the start and if Rafa makes any substitution it's all about them this evening and it's about the spectators in this ground as well because we know we, we can make this place absolutely bounce. So the boys, have, I keep saying it every, every week I'm on this, it's up to the players to show the fans that they're, they're passionate, they're going out with every intensity, and it's up to them to get these, these spectators, these fans, our fans, I'm a fan, get me excited as well uh, this evening. I'm not saying take the game to Liverpool because their counter-attack is so quick. That front three as well. Yeah, they're, they're, they're phenomenal and they, they are a good side. I don't like saying it, but they are a very, very good side. And it's going to be a difficult night for us, but it's how we apply ourselves as a team. Uh, structurally, can we, can we be solid? Can we be hard to break down? And then if we do counter-attack, let's make the most of it. We'll get chances, 
we'll get chances. Southampton had a good few chances against them the uh, the other the other day. Sorry, so we will get chances, and we've got to be clinical if we do get the chances. But there's no there's no doubt about it. It is a tough tough game. It's going to be a really tough game, but as you said, and we speak so much about the fans and the importance of fans in stadiums, but there's never an atmosphere quite like there is at Goodison than when we play them, is there? The place will be rocking. I think back to a few years ago, the nil-nil, um, but the place was just rocking. That was at a point where nobody thought anybody could take points off Liverpool and they came here and they, they weren't able to beat us. And I think largely that day, it was due to the noise in the stadium. I think it, it spurred us on and I think it also rocked them a little bit. So do you think Everton have to get stuck in, be physical, Put the mark on Liverpool early, get the fans riled and, and up for it. Well, do you know what? I heard Jurgen Klopp talking uh, his interview yesterday. He doesn't like Merseyside derbies because they're too physical. <laughs> That's what a Merseyside. So if he's saying that word, he's the manager, he's, he's re- reiterating that. I'd, off, straight away I'd go, oh, come on, let's get about this Liverpool team. They don't fancy the physical side of it because his manager is stating that to start with. But it has changed since I played. You, you cannot do the tattles that we used to do, and even decades before us, they, they were kind of more ruthless than we were. So that, that's all gone by. But what you can do is get right in the faces, get tight, don't allow them to turn, don't allow them to play. Because if this Liverpool team do play, they, they'll be anybody, including Man City, who, who I think are, are an outstanding team. So don't allow Liverpool to play. Get in the faces, get on top of them, and let get this crowd behind us. Absolutely. Maybe a little tough tackle in their early doors as well. But we have got player arrivals now as well. The players are in the stadium, so the atmosphere will start building soon. Um, we can see them here. We see Anthony Gordon played against Brentford last week. Impressive display from him, wasn't it? Yeah, Anthony's doing well. He's, he's positive when he picks the ball up. He, he's direct. He loves going up players. Whether he'll play tonight, we'll, we'll get to know in a few minutes. But uh, it's going to be interesting in the lineup. It really is tonight, whether Anthony plays... Uh, Charleston's a certain starter. He's got from, to start. Yeah, he's got, he's, he's got to start. Damari Gray, for me, has got to start mm-hmm. uh, if he's 100% fit, uh, which I can't see the, the, the ease being a problem with him. So, uh, be, whoever, whoever Rafa picks, the 11 players that start the game have got to start, and I keep saying it week in and week out from the very first whistle, and they really have, because mm-hmm. they know they're up against a very good team, but they're only as good as we allow them to play. Absolutely, and they're on our patch as well, so we've got to make it really, really difficult for them. Of course, in the pictures there as well, we did see uh, young Lewis Dobbin as well. Mm. Um, we saw Ellis Sims on the bench the other day. Now, obviously, it would be a massive thing to, to throw some of the young kids into a derby like this. Do you think we might see any glimpses of them today, or do you think uh, it's probably not the occasion? They're on the subs bench. They're, they're on the subs bench for a reason. Mm-hmm. I thought they might have got ten or fifteen minutes down at Brentford. If I, if yeah. I were being per- perfectly I think the honest, fans expected yeah, it, I, I think perhaps they thought they might have got a bit of great game time as well. I won't be, th- I won't be scared to throw them on if, uh, if things in, in the mix and saying go out there and show us what you've got. Go and express. I know as soon as they come running on. There'll be 39,000 standing right up the feet them. right behind them, whatever ever they do. The youngsters, they come through the, the ranks. So this place, will, if they do have to come on, this place will lift off. Absolutely, and I think it's important as well, you know, with the young players, I think the fans know that we're not going to put that mad expectation on them straight away. I think the Brentford game last weekend, when we were struggling to get a goal, that's when the fans were really mm. eager, weren't they, to see maybe some of the youngsters come on because... They will just have that raw hunger and desire to, to come on and do do something and there wouldn't be too much pressure on them either. No, there wouldn't be too much pressure and uh, I'm sure Ellis Sims and, and Dobbin are desperate to play some part of this game. Yeah, they'll be. it's a massive game this, it's Premier League, Merseyside derby. Under the lights uh, as Under well. the lights, the, the siren will be going off at ten past eight kind of thing and you won't want to be anywhere else in the world. Than, than here at Goodison Park so they'll have butterflies 
and rightly so. If you've not got butterflies, well, you're a very calm young man if you haven't got them. So <laughs> I've got them now, and I'm I've not even playing. <laughs> <laughs> no, it would be it would be really interesting, wouldn't it, to see if we we do get to see Lewis Dobbin or, or Ellie Sims tonight. See if they're on the bench. See if they can get into the team. But we mentioned him before, that man Richarlison. How much of a miss was he last week? You know, I'm thinking to the the balls into the box that Damari Gray provided in the last few minutes. Obviously, Dominic Calvert Lewin won't be playing against. Day. He's been a huge loss this season. But Richarlison, do you see him playing as the lone striker up top? Yeah, I, I think it would be difficult for him at Man City, like it is any striker that plays at Man City. The way that Man City played. Uh, they have 80% of the possession against us. So it was hard for Richardson to even get a touch of the ball uh, against Man City when they were playing that lone, lone figure. But I think Richardson will be certainly 100% up for this yeah. uh, tonight. He'll, he'll hopefully upset the Liverpool defenders. And uh, I, want, I want to see a, a smile on Richardson's face. I know he snarls half the time, but <laughs> that's, the way, that's the way he plays. But... I just love to see him with a with a smile on his face when he when he scores a goal. Hopefully, but uh, I keep saying it ain't going to be easy. We we know that. We're not kidding anybody. We're no. not kidding our, our listeners. They know it's a tough game, but show us show us what you made of this evening. Yeah, that's what we need, isn't it? We need a hundred percent desire. We need a hundred percent effort. Leave nothing on the pitch. I think you know we're going into a game against a very good side, but there's no excuses to not give it a hundred percent. Any game. You know, any game for Everton Football Club, you've got to give it your all. But tonight, there'll be no hiding. The, the fans won't allow anything left, less than 100%, will they? No, the the, uh, the anger after the after the Brentford game was seen. Um, and they're just letting the feelings go because they're feeling that performances should be better. Individual players should be better than what they're showing. Um, you're right, once you wear this Everton shirt... Um, everything goes out of the window. You just give it 100% or try to give 100% every game that you play. And you're not going to be outstanding every every game, but the least these fans expect is a shift from you yeah. and a tattle and an effort. And if everybody contributes that, everybody works hard, you make it difficult for the opponents. It's as simple as that. So make it as difficult tonight for Liverpool as, as we ever have done. Well, you know, I don't think that there's any hide in the fact that the fans were very unhappy after the Brentford game there's no disguise in that but this would be a, a chance to you know give us <laughs> a real boost no. it? And, and get the fans on side because there's no greater feeling I don't think than, than winning a, a game of football against these lots. So it would be a massive lift to this football club uh, and to the players but most of all to the fans yeah. if we win this football game because the scenes here if we do happen to win it at the end of the game come 10 o'clock ish would be fantastic they would I don't think half of them would, would go home, to be quite be honest. Down good they would, and they would really. but let's not get carried away. We, uh, we, I would love to win this football game this evening. So would every Evertonian that's in here uh, tonight and everybody that's watching at home as well. So uh, it's a massive game, uh, not only because it's a Merseyside derby, but of the, the table the league table and as current form we need to get out of this current form uh, these losses that we're having at the minute and uh, we need to start winning football games and what a no better feeling and start right now against your rivals at Goodison Park and to win a game but as I keep saying Sarah <laughs> I'm so sorry to say we're playing a very good team we are playing a very good team and you know we will see the team that we're going to be facing soon team news will be out for both Everton and Liverpool of course uh, just got to ask you as well in terms of at the back how do you see Rafa Benitez setting up today do you think he'll go with the three centre backs do you think he'll go four at the back I think he'll go four if I'm being perfectly honest I think he'll it'll be the same back four um, and then I'm not, obviously not the manager but I think it'll be the back four I think he might put Delph into the midfield yeah. alongside Alan with Decore and then I'm not sure whether it'll be um, Gordon or Townsend. It'll be definitely Damari Gray and Richarlison. Yeah. I think that's just the, the little one, whether it's Townsend or Andy Gordon. Yeah, absolutely. And like you said, Fabian Delph is, of course, a really experienced player as well, so wouldn't be surprised to see him back in there. I think Andre Gomez is unlikely to be, av be available. Yeah. He's back in training. But we have just been so dogged down by injuries haven't we we've got about 30 seconds now until team news so we'll we'll have that for you um the anticipation's building isn't it snods it is i'm looking forward to this team i think it'll be probably the one i predicted with just that uh, that one between townsend and andy gordon which whichever it may be uh 
it'll be interesting, but here we go. Well, here we go, <laughs> Snods right on cue. There we are, We're about to find out if Snods has called the team right. So here we have it then. Everton, your Everton team to face Liverpool this evening. In goal, we have number one, Jordan Pickford. Number five, Michael Keane. Of course, six, Alan. There he is, number seven, Richarlison, back in that starting 11. 11, Damari Gray. Number 12, Luca Dean. 14, Andros Townsend. Abdullah Decore, number 16. 22, Ben Godfrey. Number 23, Seamus Coleman. And 33, Salomon Rondon has got the nod to start there this evening. Here's the substitutes for Everton. Asmir Begovic, John Joe Kenny, Fabian Delph, Alex Awobi, Cenk Tosin, Anthony Gordon, Jean-Philippe Gabarmin, Jared Brantway and Lewis Dobbin as well. So we have got some of the youngsters on the bench there too. Right, let's have a look at the away side that we will be facing. Alison Becker, Fabinho, Virgil van Dijk, Thiago, Sadio Mane, Mohamed Salah, Jordan Henderson, Diogo Jota, Andy Robertson, Joel Matip and Trent Alexander-Arnold. Let's have a look at the bench. We've got Keller, we've got Konati, James Milner, Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain, Minamino, Tamiscus, Origi, we don't want to talk about him too much, Nico Williams and we're on the bench for Liverpool there today. So that's the team snods. Firstly, we'll start with the Blues. Now, are you surprised by any of the names in there? Um, obviously, I think a few people may, might be surprised to see what we've got Yeah, with. if I'm being perfectly honest, um, I'm surprised that I'm seeing Solomon Rondon in the team. I didn't think uh, it looks as though... I don't know what formation he's going to be. Is he going to play Richarlison up with Rondon? I don't know, but yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised that Rondon's in the actual starting lineup. Uh, but he's stuck with him, hasn't he? Yeah, he has stuck with him, and he's the manager's choice that he brought him into the club. But uh, I think oh, I don't want to be too critical, but uh, on on current form and performances, um, I didn't think he'd start tonight. I really didn't. I think that was probably the, the surprising one there in, in the start in 11 for Everton. But of course, on the bench as well, Andy Gordon, he didn't get the nod to start. Mm. So it was Townsend. Um, who, who are you looking at today for Everton and thinking can be the real... Demari Gray and uh, Richarlison are the one for me. And obviously, I think he's got a big role to play, Decore. I think uh, his energy levels, I know he's only just coming back from injury, which is a big thing. Uh, will he be 100% match fit? I'm not quite sure, but... I just think he's got an art of a lion and he, he runs around and he works incredibly hard and he will put the Liverpool midfield play, uh, players under pressure. Now, it's the people around him that have got to be there and responding around him as well. So, uh, but uh, I think, if I'm going to be perfectly honest, I think if we are going to win the game, I think it's going to come from Richarlison and Damari Gray. I would love to see Solomon Rund Rondon <laughs> score a goal. I really, really You'd would. go down in like oh, as a court hero then with, forever, surely. Without a doubt, but I just think our main two threats, as I say, are Richarlison and Damari Gray. Definitely. And just quickly as well, because we've got a really exciting VT to show you, but that front three of Liverpool, how do we stop them? It's very difficult. There's a lot of Premier League clubs uh, and European clubs can't stop the three. Uh, they're very exciting. They're very, very, very good players. The movement's exceptional and they create loads of chances. So uh, it's a difficult evening for Jordan Pickford and his four defenders and probably Alan sitting deep as well to uh, stop the supply. But a lot of teams have tried to do that and some sometimes it, it's very difficult and they find way Liverpool are finding them three players. But... Uh, They've got to have really good performances, the back four tonight. Um, I've no doubt, I, I'm, I'm going to predict Liverpool will score a goal. I think we, if we are to win the game, we've got to get two goals. Because Liverpool are scoring goals for fun. They've scored two goals in the last so many games. So it's very, very difficult. It's very difficult, but hopefully it can be done. Let's hope so. We're really, really hoping for a positive result here at Goodison Park tonight. But for now, let's have a look at the progress that we're making with Bramley Moore Dock.
Yes, the very first visible signs of the transformation of the dock became evident as the sand finally broke through the surface at the southwestern edge of the site. Eventually, all the water within the dock will be displaced and the sand bed will be heavily compacted and then topped up to form further solid foundations across the whole of the Brownlee Moor site. Thursday morning also saw the first overground foundations being poured onto the northern elevation in the form of a concrete pile cap, which will create a stable base for the distribution of the building load. Basically, it will eventually enable actual construction of the stadium to start to take place. 300 of the individual 16 metre deep supporting piles have now been drilled into the northern and southern ends of the site. Still some way to go, of course, because eventually there will be 2,500 completed piles and they're currently being drilled at the rate of 21 per day. The hydraulic tower is ready for that crucial next phase. The scaffolding is in place ahead of the complex compacting process. At some point in the new year, the piling procedure that's currently taking place around the edges of the dock can then commence in the infilled area and the skeleton shape of the new stadium really can begin to take shape. Other landscape altering developments include the reciting of offices on the eastern edge of the site with the ever increasing number of workers expected in the next 12 months or so. As we've said, there's still a long way to go, but these are certainly exciting times at Bramley Moor Dock.
you know I think people sometimes just want to believe stuff when they start seeing it you know we know what that's like and now it's tangible you can see it you can see the the progress that's being made with the stadium all the time with the updates with the drone footage so you know what's next now what comes next with Ramley Moor Dock? Good question I think um, first and foremost we've got to try and stay on track so we have a bit of work to do in terms of completing the enabling work so we've obviously kind of knocked down the um, the, the non-listed structures and the buildings that are on site there's uh, some compaction of the sand that needs to, to kind of take place so that's ensuring that the sand is uh, kind of completely kind of filling the dock all the moisture is, has been taken out of it more sand will be pumped on top of that and then there'll be a, a kind of a, a concrete sheet that will go on top and the structure will come out so hopefully the, the as I say that that enabling works process will be completed by uh, the end of January and we'll start seeing the structure kind of come out the ground at, at some point next year and I think that's going to be the exciting bit really and you know as you rightly say when, when people start to see the structure physically come out the ground that's the bit I think that, that's really going to excite people. It is like you saying it then Mo you know I've got a smile on my face <laughs> thinking about it seeing you know the stadium start to take shape physically um, I think will be when people really start to envision you know getting in there and taking their seat next to their friends and family so yeah you know it's a really really exciting time for the club and you know well done to you and everybody else at Everton Football Club for working so hard to make sure that you know we haven't taken any steps back with this we've, we've got on with it and uh, and it's going to happen sooner rather than later. So. No really appreciate it I mean I'd love to take all the credit to be honest but it's, um, it's family mode yeah ab ab absolutely <laughs> but it's ab I mean, stadium development director Colin Chong yeah. and his team have, have you know really done a sterling job I have the wonderful job of just trying to communicate it to be honest so um, well, but I, I will take all the credit Sarah absolutely <laughs> you deserve it Mo Thank no you. you're a top man and uh, it, the hard work doesn't go unnoticed we're all so grateful for it appreciate um, it so thank you so much to Mo there and now we throw it back to last week with Everton women's win at Leicester Yearney with the throw to Galvan. Turn it with the throw to Galvan, rather. Darley knocks it out to the right hand side. It comes in low into the area and almost walks into the back of the net from Duggan. Couldn't quite get on the end of it. Leicester with Perfield knocks it low into the six-yard box. Really positive signs over these last five minutes or so from the home side. Deep cross this time. Headed on and into the arms of McKeever from De Graaf. Christensen's pass buys its way through to Galvan, but she loses out. George to Graham. Darley stays on side. Real opportunity this for Everton. Darley brings it back into the area. Does she take the shot of Elbow? What a save by Jenny Landon on her WSL debut. So Darley is sprung the offside trap. She's into space again. Will she go for the shot once more? Tracks it back this time. Long run by the youngster. Looks to take on McManus. Plumtree gets back. Holds on to it as Benison plays in Tony Duggan. It's another fine stop by Lamborn. She just won't be beaten this afternoon. Out to Turner. Ten minutes plus added time to play. Still goalless. Benison, really good footwork by the young Swede. Plays it in towards the area for McGill to get on the end of it. Takes it out. What a composed finish by Simone McGill, the Everton substitute. Leicester are going to need to show real courage, real character to try and respond to this as they find themselves behind in the closing stages again. The feet would mean they will be back on the bottom where they started this game and in it comes a long one onto the bar. Lovely stuff there, the highlights from our win against Leicester last week. And I am absolutely delighted to be joined by Everton left back and a good friend, Poppy Pattinson. Poppy, thanks for joining us here at Everton Live today. Firstly, you want to give us a little recap for that game? It was a, a massive, massive, important win that, wasn't it, last week? 
Yeah, of course. Um, always good to get a win. I mean, it's what's needed for the team right now, and we just we just want to keep pushing on. Well, I can promise you, Poppy, those boos aren't for you. That must mean that the <laughs> Liverpool timing. team... Yeah, what timing that was. She's made a debut and she's getting the boos there. But no, it's a really important win. Um, it's hard to talk about anything else other than the game here right now. This is your first taste of a Merseyside derby, isn't it? How excited are you and how important are these fans going to be today? I mean, I've just been thrown right into the action there. Um, <laughs> no, I can't wait. It'll be, a, it'll be an amazing game to be a part of. Um, it's my first derby and yeah, it's good to be good to be here. Now we know it is gonna be a tough one, of course. Liverpool are on a really, really good run of form. Everton contrastingly have been struggling lately. Yep. How do we get a win here today or, or a positive result? Do you think the fans are gonna be like key key in that, just make it a real nasty bear pit like what we've just done for you there? <laughs> yeah, of course. The fans are always the tough man. I mean it's great to have fans back in the stadium, it's what we needed and today I think it's just about bringing bringing the Everton spirit and that fight and I think that'll go a long way in the in the game today. Well, you've experienced it for yourself at Walton Hall Park as well. You know what the Everton fans want, don't they? They want to see them tough tackles. They demand absolutely everything is given. You don't leave anything on the pitch. You give it 110% every game. We need to do that, don't we? Same for the women as well. The fans get going, don't they, when you slide in with a tackle or you do something like that? Yeah, of course. Like, like I said, it's so important that we have the fans back in the stadium. Obviously, yeah, they love a crunch and tackle, and hopefully we see that tonight. Absolutely. I'd love to get your boots ready for you, Poppy, and send you on there to, to go through a couple of them, to be honest I'd love with you. you too. <laughs> but back to the women now, of course. We've got a game this Sunday. A team from your neck of the woods, Durham, we have in the uh, in the Conti Cup. Looking forward to that one? Yeah, obviously one I'm, I'm very looking forward to. It's my hometown and, and Durham always put up, put up a tough fight. So, yeah, it should be um, a very good game to be a part of. You girls from the North East are tough, aren't you? Yep, we are indeed. <laughs> Look at her brave in this cold as well. It's absolutely freezing here tonight. Bless her, I've dragged Poppy out, but I knew she's from Durham, so she'll be absolutely fine. <laughs> uh, but we've got three massive home games coming up for Everton women as well. Durham, then West Ham, then Manchester United. We want all the fans to come, don't we? It's members as well. Um, so make sure you get to, get to those games. You want to see... Walton Hall Park rocking as well, don't you? Yeah, obviously it's our home ground. Fans are back in this season and we want them to be here and support us all the way. Oh, God, I'm so nervous, Poppy, for this one tonight. I'm trying to think to Sunday and Sunday is going to be a massive game. We want all of you to be there. Make it a real fortress for the girls. It's so important. It made all the difference in the last game against Manchester United as well. But back to this game now and... What do you think it would mean for Everton's season? If we were to be able to get a, a positive result here, surely that could be a catalyst for us to build on them. Yeah, I think it could be a big turning point in the season. Obviously, it's not been a good run of form, but like we know, football can change so quickly and hopefully that happens tonight. Absolutely, let's hope so. Poppy's here, she's going to be a good luck charm. If, if we win tonight, she's got to come to every derby from here on in. <laughs> um, but let's have a look back now at the Goodison Sleepout. them or help someone get a warm it's great to see everybody uh, here all with the sleeping bags all got a smile on the face as well and uh, we've heard some fabulous speeches from some lads of only 12 months ago a lad that were on drugs football club have saved him uh, and it's, it's so refreshing to hear stories like that it's absolutely amazing at the turnout. Um, I think it's the fifth year now, and it's supporting our house, which happens to have five bedrooms, supporting young people who are homeless. And it also offers a brilliant outreach service to those young people who are also at risk of being homeless across Merseyside. The young people that access us are probably not what you'd imagine. They've found themselves homeless due to parent, maybe mental health issues. But the young people who may be in college, in jobs, part-time jobs, apprenticeships, 
quite vulnerable, really, and nowhere else to go. I mean, there's so many homeless out there. I think there's about 900 homeless at any one time in Liverpool, but it's the young people we want to try and target, ones who may be leaving care or parents might kick them out. And uh, we've had a few through now. There's a few who first come in and have come back now to do it. So it's amazing. And you see how they grow and the life skills they get from us. It's done some fantastic stuff, and we just heard from Sue and the team, and from Dylan, and his story about you know being homeless at the start of the pandemic and everything that he's gone through. And you just think what we can do tonight to contribute, you know, the donations and the things from various fans, colleagues, friends, and so on. That if that can go towards help and transform and change lives, then it's just a small gesture we can do. And I think part of this also raises awareness of homelessness in the city. The home is where the heart is. Like they were saying, it's a massive charity. It's an Everton Football Club. Not just the club that we love, but the, the family atmosphere. We're not calling the People's Club for nothing. So that's the main reason why I say we're back. And I'd like Michael says the atmosphere. So, but it's brilliant being back. Can't wait for next year. <laughs> Want to come again? He's already signed us up. Yeah. <laughs> He's already signed us up for next year. We're coming back, don't worry. <laughs> so I really got emotional, especially after COVID. They haven't forgotten us. You know, they still come back. We've got new people. We've got people who've come in and done it every year. And the money they're raising is so vital. And we're just... The young people, they stood up tonight and spoke in front of them and they've never done that and they sat with me and said, wow, look at this, you know, it is amazing and we can't thank not just fans but the people have come out, some people don't even support football but they support Everton and our cause. say a massive thank you and a huge congratulations to every single person who took part in that Goodison Park sleep out in the oh just so cold it's so cold here now as well as you can hear there as well here they come out on the pitch behind us so you could tell who were coming out oh, then couldn't you you could tell we were just having us. a laugh poppy I said bless her that was her first introduction I was getting the booze but we know what that sound means but yeah back to uh, the Goodison Park sleep out as well we'll try and ignore that lot yeah. behind us eh? uh, it's fantastic isn't it and raising money for some incredible causes like the Rainbow Laces campaign you were here today as well do you know what Sarah incredible turnout I, uh, I've been to the last couple that obviously they couldn't do one last year because of the Covid but I came just for an hour to uh, talk to the uh, talk to the fans and I promised to camera that I would do it next year because I feel a bit guilty coming, doing your little piece, talking to fans, having a cup of coffee and then leaving when all them are getting prepared in the sleeping bags to stay out for a great cause. So I've put me... Uh, Head on the line, and I'm going to do it. definitely do it. We'll next do. Year. We'll both do it, eh, yeah. shall we? Yeah, we'll absolutely. Both do it. You've got our words there now. Will be. I have done it a couple of years ago. I could, this year we had. Did you get much didn't... sleep? Um, no, not really. No. no. <laughs> no. I, I think it was largely fueled by caffeine. I got to a certain point in the night and thought, I'm not sleeping. Here we go. Then it is the mighty blues coming out behind us. That's what we want to hear, isn't it? It's, not, it's hard to concentrate at the moment now, isn't it, with everything going on? You just... Yeah, the players have come out now and the, the nerves are starting to, to get to you a little bit. The fans are, are filling the ground up already. The roars, the boos for Liverpool. It's, uh, wow, I've just said to Poppy, it's her first derby, yeah. and I said, wait till the sirens go, wait till the boys come out to take cars. This place is electric and... Uh, yeah, let's hope it's electric till 10 o'clock this evening. Oh, and beyond, I tell you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and beyond. beyond. We'll all be in the Winslow in the brick after the game <laughs> if uh, if this is a good result. But, you know, just on the women as well, uh, there's quite a few of our women's players here tonight. And I said the same as you, Snods, you know, it's their first taste of it, experience of Derby as a fan. And I said, be ready because you will not hear noise like you will hear, will you? No, that's right. And I know we've got a, not, a lot of new players this season and uh, they'll find out tonight what exactly means playing for Everton Football Club um, and the ladies team they, they, they're just finding the feet at the minute they've had a couple of losses a couple of wins so uh, but when when they hear the roar uh, when the players come walking out they'll go wow I'm at a massive club here in Everton Football Club absolutely well I did have the privilege earlier of speaking to former striker James Beatty ahead of this one here's what he had to say Welcome back to Everton Live, and I'm absolutely delighted to be joined by former Everton striker James Beatty. Now, James Mark, and welcome to the show. Merseyside Derby doesn't get much bigger, does it, than this? No, it's a huge game, um, and this will be bouncing in full tonight. 
and um, you know, I think Everton are, are struggling a little bit, so I have to shore up the back and, and hopefully they can get something going forward, but it's going to be a tough game and hopefully the crowd can get behind them and, and give them some inspiration. It's going to be a really tough game, obviously Everton, it's no secret that we're in a poor run of form and Liverpool contrastingly doing ever so well at the moment, but you know very well what this, this crowd can be like at Goodison Park. It can go against you when it's not going well, but how influential can this 40,000 Evertonians be tonight if they get this place rocking and get right behind the team? Yeah, I, I think they'll, they'll get behind the team if they, if they see you know, um, industry and, and the players trying to, to get a result. Um, I think that that's been one of the major things that I've heard from, from Everton fans recently. Um, when you pull the shirt on, you, you play for the badge and you give it everything you've got. Um, you know, and, and that's that's the way I used to play. And, and and I think the lads, if the lads do that tonight, the crowd will get behind them, and then hopefully they can carry them through. Absolutely. Well, you think back to that team that you played in under David Moyes, of course, and the players that you were in that team alongside some real greats. You know, uh, your Tim Cales, your Mikel Arteta's, etc. And that team was renowned, wasn't it, for that having that real connection with the crowd? And you think that's what the players need to give the fans something tonight, don't they? To get them on board, get stuck in from the first whistle. Yeah, definitely. I think you know it's uh, it's uh, it's definitely a, a stadium and, and a crowd that can get behind you. But like I say, if if you if you put the effort in, the the crowd will match that. And then I say that can that can give you the inspiration and the and the lift that you need. Um, but as as you've just said there, it's it's sometimes getting it out of out of the players that are, that are playing these days. But certainly in my day, you know, with Lee Carsley, David Weir, Kev Kilban, Tim, Mikel. Um, you know, we were really tight as a, as a group of people uh, off the pitch, um, and then when we came on it, you know, we, we just used to play with, with everything we got. And uh, like I say, you, you play for the badge, you play for the badge on the front of the shirt, and the people always remember the name on the back. 100%, I think that's spot on. And just speaking about Mikel there, I think it was his ball in delivery. I remember a goal you scored against Blackburn very well. You practiced on the training pitch, pretended to kind of be out of breath or something, and then yeah. you ran in and scored a header in the park end here. Yeah. I remember that clearly. So we'd, we'd practice that, and um, I was pretending to tie my shoelace, but that just was made, it. made eye contact <laughs> with Mikel, and he, he put a great ball in, and you know it was easy for me to finish it off. Absolutely, we could do some deliveries like that tonight, couldn't we? And yeah. someone, of course, to put them away as well. That's an area Everton have been struggling recently. Yeah, I think he's had, you know, big injuries to to Richarlison and Calvert Lewin, which which hasn't helped the cause. But I've heard uh, that um, Richarlison's back tonight and and Decorey as well in midfield. So um, hopefully, as I say, that can give them a lift and and what what will be a very tough game against a, you know, probably the best, if not one of the best teams in, in the country or the, or the world so they've, they've got a tough test but hopefully they can come through it. Frightening prospect isn't it facing them, any team facing them at the well, moment That's what you want though, you, yeah. want, you want games like this and, and you know you're at home in front of your own fans and you know, onto the pitch with a, a defeatist attitude you're beaten already so there's yeah. no point coming out Absolutely and it is nil sat isn't it so up to when we saw the banner the other day that's what the fans deserve and hopefully exactly. we'll get that tonight yeah. won't we? Totally yeah, absolutely. Well, James, thank you so much for joining us. It's been a real pleasure to talk to you. You're at Wigan now, I believe, as well, aren't you? You've yeah. from your staff at Wigan. Yeah, How's that I'm going for assistant you? assistant manager at Wigan and yeah. really enjoying it. It's nice to be, um, you know, it was, a, it was a tough time last year with the club going through admin. Uh, Liam steered the club um, through that process and, and now we're, um, we've been backed by the, the board and Mal Brannigan, who's the, who's the CEO, is, you know, really on side and, and we're... We're doing all right. We're going okay. We're just trying to stay under the radar and you know, just get, yeah, just get on with what we're doing and, and go about it quietly and then see where it takes us. Brilliant. Well, the best of luck to you there and, and the rest of Wigan as well. And you. let's hope you'll have a smile on your face at the end of this one. Yeah, that'd be nice. <laughs> <laughs> James Beatty, thank you so much. Thank you. Lovely stuff, great to talk to James Beattie there ahead of the kickoff. And it's always great to have former players here on Everton Live. And sadly, we did say goodbye to a former player earlier this week, Cliff Marshall, sadly passing away. And of course, Ray Kennedy as well. We will be paying tribute to players from both former sides uh, just ahead of kickoff. Um, yeah, but about this one now as well, Snods, it's, it's getting close, isn't it? We've heard the boo and we've heard the cheering. It's like pantomime time setting in. Oh, getting yeah, goosebumps. We are. We, there's still still a bit of time. There's still 
time for the uh, for the fans to come in but uh, as you say you just get nervous as each minute goes by i know i'll be leaving you at eight o'clock to take my position in commentary and uh, be a long walk to that commentary and uh, i'm looking forward to it i am apprehensive but i always am for, for any derby game so it's not that we're not playing well liverpool are playing well i just get apprehensive for every derby game so uh, Come on, you blues. Come on, you blues. Oh, honestly, I want to get in my seat now as well and just start <laughs> screaming and shouting and everything else. Um, but the teams are warming up behind us as well. And some of the players that we're going to keep our eye on today for Everton, the likes of Decore, he's just come back into the side as well. Uh, against Brentford, of course, it was, it was brilliant to see him back in there. How important is he going to be in tonight's game? Very important. He's a, he's a, he's a colossal player. Uh, he's a big unit. Is Decore and uh, what Rafa Benitez has said to him, I want you scoring more goals. We Ancelotti played kind of deep role and didn't really get forward much, but we've seen him on a couple of occasions score goals, been unlucky, trying to get on the end of things in uh, the opposing box. So I, I've, I've liked him this season. I think he's, he's covered every part of the grass you want him to. He makes it uncomfortable for opposition midfield players. And as you say, he's been a goal threat as well in the opposition's box, so uh, yeah, he has been missed in recent weeks. He has, like you said as well, he's been given more of a licence to get forward, I think, this season and someone who could chip in with a goal. Someone else who we're looking to to help us with the goals tonight, Richarlison. He is going to, we spoke about him on the show already, but he's going to be right up for it, isn't he? He is someone who thrives, I think, in big atmosphere, the fans right behind him. Yeah, he does. He definitely does. He's, uh, he's a big game player. Um, there's no doubt about it for us. Um, I'd love to hear 37,000 singing, uh, uh, he only costs the, uh, 50 million. I would love to hear him singing that song this evening. And he thrives on things like that, he really does. So uh, I just hope he puts a shift in, which he, which he always does, but he'll put Liverpool's defence under pressure. Don't do anything stupid, don't do anything rash. Let's have him on the pitch at the end of the game. Let's not get booked early doors as well, because then he's on eggshells for the rest of the game. But go out there and try just to upset Liverpool. Don't let him, don't let him dictate play. And if he's about, Richarlison will put him under pressure. That's 100% guaranteed. Definitely, and let's hope he can replicate what he did at Anfield and get a goal against him as well. But we've got Ben, Ged ben Godfrey, apologies, now speaking ahead of this one. Ben, from the outside, no wins since September. It looks tough. On the inside, what's the build-up been like to this game? Confident. Um, you know, you always you always have a little bit of a bad spell during the season. Um, but, you know, we've got good characters and we're looking to bounce out of it as soon as possible and hopefully tonight's the night. Liverpool average, I'm sure you know, three goals a game in the Premier League this season. It's never been better for them in terms of a club record at this stage. How do you stop them? Yeah, they've got quality. Um, you know, we, we know that. Um, we've got a game plan and, you know, we'll try and stick to that and give ourselves the best possible chance of, you know, keeping them out, keeping a clean sheet and, and getting three points. A full house at Goodison for this game for the first time in three years. What part do the fans need to play? Yeah, really looking forward to it. We're all excited. These are the games you want to be involved in, um, you know, in terms of atmosphere. So, you know, you know, we're looking to get a fast start, um, you know, get Goodison rocking and, yeah, you know, can't wait to get out there. Ben Godfrey there, he's someone who loves a sliding tackle. He, it could be a really good game for him tonight, couldn't it? You're be right, hard. you're right there. It will be hard. Um, first of all, he's got to defend defend very well against the back three, same as all the all the back four have, same as Jordan Pickford's got to be in good good shape this evening as well. But Ben's got it. He, he, he struggled a little bit this season because he's had COVID, but a, a fit and 100% Ben Godfrey, we, we've seen what he's made of. He's quick. He's aggressive, he's good in the air, and uh, he's a very, very good defender. He's going to need to be this evening, but let's hope that uh, he's on his game tonight. Let's hope so. He's certainly got his work cut out for him, but he's very capable of keeping them quiet. Let's hope that's what he does tonight. You can hear the fans starting to get excited, and somebody that we're hoping will get us on our feet today, Damari Gray. We've spoken a little bit about him already, but he started the season so well, pinging in the goals. Um, he's, he's not scored for a little while now, He'd be delighted, wouldn't he, to, to get back to scoring ways tonight? Yeah, Damari's been outstanding since he arrived at the club. I think his, his movement is uh, very good off the ball to accepting it. Uh, when he receives the ball, he, he's good at going by players. He's got a change of pace. And he, he had scored a couple of goals early on in his Everton career. 
I'd love to see him score this evening. I'd love to see anybody score this anyone evening. In blue. Yeah, <laughs> anyone in blue score this evening. But uh, yeah, he came on against Brentford. I thought he was going to be out three or four weeks when he when he went down. It looked like a groin it was injury. Concerning, wasn't it? Yeah, in the it, City re game. it really was. But uh, it's not as bad as we thought. He, he came on substitute, and now he's here to start. And let's hope he can influence the game. Them crosses as well, there. Yeah. You know, 38 crosses. You just need somebody to to make the most of what he's doing. I think that was a frustration against Brentford, wasn't it? We've seen these Sarah, deliveries. I was, going to, I was going to tell you. I was going to say that to you. He put two great deliveries in there when he came on. He was only on for 20 minutes, but two great deliveries in there. Nobody was on the end of him, and you could see his little bit of frustration in there. That, that's good because you're asking him to do a job and put the ball in, and he has done. Yeah. And we've not got on the end of it. So, but he's got to keep doing that. Just put him in. You're doing your job. Well, somebody who might be looking to uh, capitalise on those deliveries today will be Richarlison. You know, he's somebody who can sneak in, a little header, great finish as well. You know, do you think he'll be able to uh, make the most of those crosses in tonight from probably Townsend and Damari Gray as well? Well, let, well let's hope so. I know commentators say many a time when balls are going in the box, they should be gambling, they should be getting on... It's not a gamble. Mm -hmm. When you know good deliveries are coming in from out wide, Townsend or uh, Gray, Demari Gray, you know it's not a gamble. Just try and get in there in that area. Uh, good strikers know when it's coming in where they should be, and that's where they've got to be on, on the end of great balls into the box. And hopefully, Richarlison, he is a thinking player. He, he does think about his positional play and when it's when it's coming in the box. Let's hope he's, he gets on the end of one or two things this evening. Oh, let's hope so. I want to see him with a diving header in that Gladys Street end. It would just be absolute carnage. We're just hoping for a positive result, aren't we? And the play we were speaking about before as well, the core rate, you know, we just mentioned how important he is. I think that midfield tonight, having him back in there, it's a massive lift for, for the fans, massive lift for the team as well. Look at that as well. Two goals in the nine appearances, four assists. 20 tackles those are all things that are gonna we're gonna need for him tonight aren't we I, I i knew what he was like when he played for watford i always admired him at watford when he played against us i thought i wouldn't mind seeing him in a, in a blue shirt and that's a big compliment for an opposition player when you think yeah he'd do well in an everton shirt and at times all right a final ball lets him down now and again but just the energy and the determination from him you seen that uh, when he tracked the lad back at Brentford into his own penalty box. Yeah. We could have gone two goals down there. Could and he, easily have been a yeah. second, couldn't and he? Yeah. And he got back and he, he won the ball. And as I say, he, he, he does he does play with his heart on his sleeve, Decore. And he, he'll say that he's not always had the best of games, but what he does is give us 100% every time he puts, or it feels that way, every time he puts a blue shirt on. And uh, I wouldn't like to play against him if I was a midfield player. I've got to be perfectly honest. He's an absolute engine, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, he is. And we need that from him tonight, covering every single blade of grass, sorry. Well, Snod, it is your time now to make your way up I to know. the gantry. And, I know. Uh, you know. All I can <laughs> say is... Uh, Come on, the boys. Come on, Come the, on the boys. boys. Uh, well, well, we'll be giving it loads on the, hopefully, on the commentary. I'd love us to take the lead and see this place absolutely take off. But I'm ready for it. You're ready for it. These are ready for it. Are. Let's hope the players are ready for it. Let's have it, eh? Let's have it. Go on, Snod. Thank you Lovely. so much. Thank and, you. And uh, let's throw it to Rafa Benitez now ahead of this one. Rafa, it's seven games without a win. Is this the last game you needed? I think it's the best game for us because um, a derby is a derby and then you can change everything. So normally you say that it doesn't matter the position on the table, so I think it would be a good game for us. You need to find something in attack going forward. You've mentioned that in your programme notes. But why stick with Salomon and Rondon now up front? No, no goals, 10 games. Yes, yeah, to have uh, two strikers, so I think it's important for us to have more people uh, in front and then I think he can, he can help and he can make a difference if he can link with the other players. You've faced Everton teams over the years in Merseyside derbies who've sat deep, who, who've made it physical. Will your team? I think if you want to beat the Liverpool at the, at the moment, you need to be a strong. You need to be a strong, play well, and uh, that is the Premier League. You have to, to be a strong physically too. The Liverpool have three goals a game they're averaging. Uh, I think that's a club record at this stage. What have you got as a team defensively to do just to keep them out? Yeah, work as a team, stick together, be compact, and then be sure that uh, we help each other. So you cannot uh, stop Salah with one player, you need the uh, help. Okay, we'll do it. And what part do you need the fans to play? 
the fans are amazing for us. So if they are behind the team, uh, the team can run an extra mile if it's necessary. Rafa Benitez then ahead of this one. No doubt it's going to be a very, very strange feeling for him tonight. The atmosphere is building. I can't tell you it's electric. Not a single fan is sat in their seats. Everybody's standing up. I just know this place is going to be rocking tonight. It's Everton versus Liverpool. It's the Merseyside derby. Thank you so, so much for joining us here on Everton Live. But just to finish on, something awful, awful happened in this city last week and last week and some things transcend football. Everybody at Everton Football Club would like to reach out and send their condolences to Ava White's family and friends and something that is just awful. And I'm off, on the 12th minute of today's game, we'll all be recording. Thank you and see you next time.